a KQED HD production. In the battle for children's health, Edward Flores is in the trenches every day. He works for the American Lung Association, visiting the homes of children with asthma in Oakland. We do an assessment for environmental triggers, such as dust, allergens, stuff that actually happens inside the house. We pick some uh, home remediation supplies that we bring over to the families that we work with. Most importantly is the pillow and casings and the mattress and casings. Our aim is to bring these supplies to serve as a resource so that not only are we teaching them and educating what environmental triggers are, but also giving them tools. Flores is at the front lines of a national public health problem, a staggering growth in the number of asthma cases, which more than doubled in small children between 1980 and 1994. Hi, Dion. How are you doing? How are you? All right. How are you? Let's go in. Okay. Dion Jenkins' family lives in East Oakland, where diesel pollution and lack of access to doctors have made asthma a major cause of emergency hospital visits. So as part of our home visit today, uh -huh. we are going to be taking a look at the bedrooms and seeing um, some of the uh, possibilities where triggers could exist for asthma. Okay. Jenkins' daughters are two of the 7 million children and 16 million adults in the United States who are affected by this lung disease. It's the most common chronic disabling disease of childhood and accounts for somewhere between 15 and 20 billion dollars a year in expenses. You have that? In that corner? Okay, great. Let's keep pulling up. These will actually protect and keep dust mites away, which serve as asthma triggers, okay? So we'll sip it in here. Sip it out. Researchers understand some of the things that can trigger symptoms in patients who already have the disease. For example, they know that the droppings left by microscopic dust mites can bring on an attack. That's why they encourage people with asthma to protect their beds from dust. But scientists can only pinpoint a few factors that are known to actually cause the chronic inflammation and narrowing of the airways that underlie asthma. Take a deep breath and breathe out, right? That's important because... Despite the fact that asthma is so prevalent, the reasons why people get the disease remain largely a mystery. There is no magical one asthma gene or set of asthma genes, although we know that asthma ran in families, particularly if a mother had asthma and if two parents were asthmatic or had allergy, their children were at higher risk. There isn't a magic allergen. If you're exposed to it, it's going to bring out this predisposition that, that you might have. We don't know for sure why some people get asthma as children and other people get it as adults. Thought I'd see how things are going with the chips from those bronchoscopies. Researchers do know that cigarette smoke is linked to asthma. And new research has shown that air pollution, particularly diesel soot, might cause asthma, not just worsen asthma attacks, as was previously believed. Scientists are also studying the possible effects of diet, stress, and early exposure to viruses and allergens. But for some researchers, like UC San Francisco's Homer Boucher, the number one clue to solving the puzzle is the fact that asthma seems to have been rising for the past 50 to 70 years in countries that are industrialized or on their way to becoming so. Something about the Western style of living, as we do in America, or Western Europe, Australia, Japan, where asthma rates are high, something about our way of raising children is responsible for the increase in the prevalence of asthma. We need to figure it out. They're just like regular surgical masks, and these will protect you from actually inhaling a lot of the dust particles. Figuring out what caused the rise in asthma cases could ultimately provide parents and policymakers with preventative tools that aren't available to them today. In their efforts to find effective measures, Boucher and his colleagues are testing a broad hypothesis that researchers suspect could help explain the rise in asthma cases. It's called the hygiene hypothesis, and it's the idea that our westernized lifestyle is too, well, hygienic, and that certain types of microbes are beneficial to our immune systems. 
The original idea was first suggested by British doctor David Strawn in 1989. He made the interesting observation that the more older siblings a person has, the less likely is the person to develop allergies or asthma. He associated having lots of siblings, especially older siblings, with lower standards of hygiene in the household and proposed this hygiene hypothesis. At first, researchers thought that the older siblings were building up the immune systems of the younger ones by passing on viruses to them. But that theory didn't hold up. Turns out that the more severe viral respiratory infections they had in childhood, the more likely, not the less likely, were they to have asthma. So what was it then? If it wasn't viruses, perhaps it was a different kind of organism. Erika von Muchis, an investigator in Bavaria, did this fascinating study looking at the rates of allergy and asthma among Bavarian children raised in these small farming towns. And she found that the children who lived in these houses where the stables are right next to the house had lower rates of allergy and asthma than children living in the town not exposed to domestic animals. She further showed that the more endotoxin, which is a protein associated with manure, the more endotoxin there is in the bedding of the children, the less likely were they to be allergic or asthmatic later in childhood. And that's a change in the hygiene hypothesis, that exposure to microbes, not viral infections, but especially to the bacterial microbes associated with domestic animals is somehow protected. Researchers are only beginning to understand how the bacteria in manure might strengthen the immune system and reduce asthma risk. And one of the ways, or the theory is now, one of the ways the bacteria in our intestines, in infancy in particular, shapes us is by shaping the development of our immune function. Given that most children nowadays can't grow up with farm animals, could the beneficial effects of the pigs' and cows' poop somehow be exported to the city? This is what Boucher and his colleagues are trying to find out. In the East Bay town of Pleasant Hill, two-month-old Thomas is participating in a study of babies who are being fed beneficial bacteria called probiotics. These aren't the bacteria found in farm animals' manure, but a different bacterium also found among children with low rates of asthma. Half of the kids in the study have at least one parent with asthma, as in Thomas's case. It just felt like you were constantly, like you'd run a long run and you just couldn't catch your breath. I wouldn't want to watch Thomas going through that. As a mother, it would just be very, very scary. Oh. The babies get a daily megadose of the bacterium for six months. The idea behind the study is that this cousin of a bacterium found in yogurt might protect the children against asthma by regulating their immune system. He doesn't mind it at all, actually. Okay. It turns out the immune system is intimately involved in causing asthma. Somehow, immune cells that are usually found in the gut appear in the lungs and needlessly release chemicals against normally inoffensive things like dust mites or pollen. And so this whole arm of defense resembling that that's used to eliminate parasites from the gut is mounted against these harmless allergens inhaled into the airways the result is the airway inflammation that lies at the root of asthma. The possibility of finding a preventative measure based on introducing more bacteria into kids' lives is intriguing, but researchers warn that the hygiene hypothesis is just that, a hypothesis, and that it leaves many questions unanswered. The house that we'll take a look at is your uh, bathroom, just to make sure that there For example, why is it that children in the inner city suffer from asthma at higher rates than other kids when they often grow up surrounded by bacteria? What makes those particular bacteria different than what's found on a farm? And there is no one unified theory that can explain why we're allegedly seeing more asthma. While researchers try to solve asthma's many riddles, is there anything that parents can do to reduce their children's risk? We're really dependent on sunlight for vitamin D levels. Vitamin D is important for the lining of the bronchial airways, and the microbes of dirt may be particularly beneficial. 
So letting children play outside, you get both sunlight, you get dirt. Playing with other kids is a good idea. Having siblings is a good idea. If you like pets, have them from birth. Have them in the household before the child is born. This is especially true of dogs. Bringing a pet in when the child is five or six might not be a good idea, but if the dog is present from birth, it's associated with lower rates of allergies and asthma. Okay, a dog may not be in your future, but simpler things like avoiding unnecessary antibiotics will protect kids' beneficial bacteria. And how about bringing the farm home? The most protective animal is the pig. A pet pig is maybe going a little far, but put it on the list. 